fear of losing your identity in addition to being afraid of a possible change, people fail because their identity is wrapped around certain negative aspects of their lives. Often, an obese person even when they know that obesity is bad for them feels good with being obese because eating a lot is who they think they are. They define themselves as being big boned and as being wired to gorge on fast food. Granted, not everyone has this problem, and I'm not singling out people with weight problems. I was overweight in my late teens, and I drew certain pleasure out of being called Big Martin, so I know how it feels. Likewise, in some twisted way, I enjoyed being an entrepreneur who constantly failed. I felt proud that I kept trying, even though it would have served me more to stop being proud of my struggles and probe into why I'd been failing so much. Again, it's definitely not comfortable to realize that you actually like struggling, but it might be the biggest stumbling block that separates you from success. It's important to acknowledge that the biggest failure in life is to remain the same person throughout the years. As they say, if you're not growing, you're dying. Merely acknowledging that you have a fondness for certain negative aspects of your life can help you take the first step to defeat it. Last but not least, don't romanticize the fact that you're struggling. Pride yourself on overcoming your circumstances instead of drawing significance out of your hardships. In her speech at the Harvard University, J. K. Rowling, author of Harry Potter, the best selling book series in history, said poverty entails fear and stress and sometimes depression, it means a thousand petty humiliations and hardships. Climbing out of poverty by your own efforts, that is indeed something in which to pride yourself but poverty itself is romanticized only by fools. 21. I used to be extremely insecure as a teenager. I couldn't talk to women and I couldn't fit into a group. I considered myself ugly because I suffered from a bad case of acne. As twisted as it sounds, I must have at least partly enjoyed and glorified being this awkward, bizarre shy guy. Oh, what a special snowflake he was. I'm forever grateful that one day I opened my eyes and doubled down on climbing out of that perception. As Rowling said, that's something I can pride myself on not the fact that I was insecure. Empowering story number 3, Sidney Poitier accomplished Bahamian American actor and cultural symbol Sidney Poitier recounts in his book Life Beyond Measure that the first, most significant turning point in his career was when he picked up a local newspaper and browsed through the job listings looking for a job as a dishwasher. Not seeing anything of interest, he turned to toss the paper into the trash when his eyes caught the theatrical listings and an ad saying in bold type actors wanted. With his curiosity piqued, he read the article below the headline and discovered that the production was to be cast at a place called the American Negro Theater in Harlem. Realizing the theater wasn't far away from where he was standing, he decided to attend the audition. With only a few years of formal schooling, he struggled to read aloud from a book to the director who was conducting the audition. His heavy Bahamian accent wasn't exactly helpful, either. The director snatched the book out of his hand, spun him around and marched him to the door. He bellowed, get out of here and stop wasting people's time. Why don't you go out and get yourself a job as a dishwasher or so mething? You can't read, you can't talk, you're no actor. Then he threw Sidney out and slammed the door shut. As Poitier was walking back to the bus stop to continue his search for a dishwashing job, a thought occurred to him. As he recalls, why did he recommend my going out and getting a job as a dishwasher? Not once during the audition did I tell him that I was a dishwasher, so why did he say it? And what became clear to me was that dishwashing washes view of my value as a human being. In that moment, I made the choice that I could not and would not allow that to stand. Now, what was I operating on? He was operating on what I learned from my mom, and what I learned from my dad that I am somebody. I was always somebody. And here this guy who didn't he know me from Adam had fashioned for me a life that I could not allow to happen if I had anything to do with it. I decided then and there, in that pivotal moment, to be an actor, if only to show this man and myself that I could 22. Soon after the audition, after completing a shift at a dishwashing job, Sidney was browsing through the newspaper when an older waiter asked him what was new in the paper. Embarrassed, Sidney admitted that he couldn't read well. 
Thuider offered to teach him, and on many nights that followed, Sidney learned how to read. He also got rid of his Bahamian accent. On his second attempt at the theater, he was given a leading role in the Broadway production Lysistrata. More roles soon followed. In 1963, as the first actor of African descent to do so, he won the Academy Award for Best Actor for his role in Lilies of the Field. In 1980, he directed comedy Stir Crazy, which for many years was the highest grossing film directed by a person of African descent. In 2002, in recognition of his remarkable accomplishments as an artist and as a human being, he received an Academy Honorary Award from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. In 2009, he was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Barack Obama. And to realize it all started with one rude director and Sydney's resolution not to let him belittle his value as a human being.